What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, today is finally the day. The other night, we had an announcement that was put out by Deep Silver that Time Splitters will be making a return. Not only that, but they are actually reforming the original studio who created the Time Splitter series. And this is exciting stuff. We're gonna go over all of that here today. Also, we're gonna be talking about some sales numbers that were put out by an analyst firm around the PlayStation 5, the Xbox, and the Nintendo Switch for the first quarter of this year with sell-through numbers. And you're gonna wanna see the comparisons here. And we're also gonna be talking about Starfield once again, because somehow it's back in the news. Well, it looks like there is now a new expected release window for this game. And we also found out a bit more about how Microsoft's gonna be handling the Xbox and Bethesda shows at E3. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with the whole situation, a bit of an update with Warner Brothers Media and all those studios that are underneath them, like NetherRealm, Rocksteady, uh, and so on, in this whole merger that's taken place with AT&T, and then we have them uh, with Warner Brothers Media merging with Discovery, and now it's Warner Discovery. It's a whole thing there, but people were trying to figure out what was going to go, what was going to happen with all these studios, and if they'd be broken up. Well, we can head over here. This on Twitter from Brandon Ross saying, we now believe virtually all of Warner Media's games division is heading into Warner Discovery. And then to follow up, Rich Greenfield says, all the major gaming assets like Mortal Kombat go to the new Warner Discovery. And we're going to see what happens then with Warner Discovery. And if they really want to make another big Mortal Kombat, for example, or if they want to pursue uh, more when it comes to the Batman IP and, and the gaming series there. I, I assume they probably will because I'm sure that makes pretty good money overall, but it also comes down to being able to manage and create these games. And sometimes, the, you know, these companies don't really want to deal with that. And we'll see if eventually they may spin one of these off and sell it to Microsoft or something. So something to keep our eye on here. At least we kind of know where they're going. Also, if you remember last year, there was an entire video playthrough put up for Gears of War 3, which is, all right, that's just fine, I guess. But it was on the PlayStation 3, which really caught everyone off guard. And it turns out Epic had been doing some internal testing with Unreal Engine in general on the PlayStation 3. And they used this very buggy build of Gears of War 3. But it was it was interesting to kind of watch that happen. Well, it looks like it's now out there. It's been released online so you can download it but it's not necessarily gonna work on even a modified PlayStation 3 as you need the development kit that has the extra RAM. We can head over here on Twitter. This from Pixelbutt saying, it's the 10th anniversary of Gears of War 3 PS3 day, uh, data being built. So to celebrate, I'm releasing it. I no longer plan to release prototype game stuff after this as this was the last one I was sitting on. So it's really cool to see this get out there. But unfortunately, like I said, the vast majority of people won't be able to even access or use this. Apparently that, the PS3 emulator with RC PS3 can get to the title screen, but not much further. They may actually modify that emulator so it can play this. I, I don't really know how uh, how interested everyone is in playing Gears of War 3 on a PS3 emulator because, I mean, you could really just pop it in, obviously, your Xbox Series X right now and play it in much better fidelity. It's more just something interesting to look back on and now have access to. Oh, and we had talked about the whole Amiibo situation around Skyward Sword HD. Well, there was some some fine print at the bottom of that page that started to make the rounds yesterday because people were wondering, okay, well, maybe I won't get the, the Zelda Loftwing amiibo. I'm sure I can use one of my other amiibos. Well, let's take a look at the page here at the bottom. This is on that Nintendo What's New page that kind of showed off that new amiibo where it says the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo figure is the only amiibo that can be used in the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Amiibo sold separately though, but that's uh, that's kind of deflating, I would say, for people who maybe have some of the other Amiibos that they thought they, they might be able to use. And naturally, that means that this Amiibo will only become even more valuable after it comes out. So here's hoping Nintendo makes enough of them. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with some of these sales figures around the PlayStation 5, the Switch, and the Xbox Series systems. Now, looking at the PS5 and the Xbox, we know those specifically have serious supply issues right now. Although, I am starting to see the Xbox show up in stores a bit. I saw a Series S at my local Walmart 
recently. So we'll see if those maybe start to show up a bit more online. But obviously we see the PS5 that just sells out right away. In fact, they went on sale again yesterday with like a PlayStation Direct uh, offering that they had on their website. GameStop had them listen. They were just gone like in a couple of minutes. But we can actually take a look at some of the sell through numbers that are now starting to hit the internet. We'll head over here to VGC. I say PlayStation 5 reportedly outsold Xbox Series X and S by more than two to one during the first three months of 2021. However, we do have to account for the Nintendo Switch, which outsold both its rivals combined. Now this is covering the first quarter of 2021 from Ampere an analysis which suggests Sony sold through 2.83 million units to consumers during the first calendar year. This does kind of fall in line with the 3.3 million that Sony said in their investors briefing that they had shipped in the three months because keep in mind, if you ship them out, there's still, of course, uh, some that may be in transit at the time. Maybe they are sitting in a warehouse or in, I mean, it could be in someone's living room for all we know, right? As scalpers and resellers are, are stacking these things, but I don't know if it's that large of a difference there of uh, what nearly 500,000 or so systems uh, compared to the Xbox Series X and S consoles that sold a combined total of 1.31 million units and well let's take a look at how the switch did here we can go down a little further I said Nintendo sold 5.86 million switch consoles during the first quarter that's up 12 percent compared to quarter one of 2020. So if we really sit down and look at this, all right, the PS5 sold twice as much as the Xbox Series X and S, and the Switch sold twice as many as the PlayStation 5. This from Ampere Analysis says both Sony and Microsoft's new consoles are suffering from supply constraints and unpredictable availability. Sony will be pleased that its PS4 market share is continuing into the new generation, but it is very hard to gauge real demand under the current market conditions. And obviously these numbers come out, there's a lot of arguing online between uh, fans of either system, but realistically now we really can't get a grasp on how many these systems can actually sell, right? Sony and Microsoft, because they appear to be very supply constrained, more so Microsoft, I guess, or maybe because their big focus is on Game Pass. They're just like, we don't need as many Xboxes, but it turns out they probably did. It's it's hard to say where we are right now, which one is technically more in demand, although I would lean towards obviously the PlayStation because they've sold twice as many and they're still constantly sold out. But obviously the Switch continues to roll along here with no real supply constraints yet having what over 5.8 million units sold in the first quarter. But we have heard from President Furukawa that they could come up with some issues in the future here as we head towards the holiday with the, the chip shortage still being a serious factor in their plans. And that could end up being a pretty big issue for Nintendo as we go into the holiday season where we're expecting some big announcements and releases from them. And if Breath of the Wild 2 does fall into say the first quarter of next year, maybe they'll have enough time Time to get more systems ready to go. There's been talks about like a revision. I'm sure they'll do some special edition system even around the Zelda anniversary and so on there. But looking at the PS5 and the Xbox at this point, it's just, can they make enough of them? And strangely enough, Sony's been able to make twice as many systems as Microsoft has been able to do that. I mean, to me, that's the biggest takeaway now, not necessarily that they've sold twice made, but the fact that they were able to create twice as many. We'll see in like, I guess a year or two, which one is more in demand as they eventually get to a point where they can be just found in stores when you walk in. Next up, let's talk about time splitters making its long awaited return. It's been a while. We've had different projects that were going on where what time splitters rewind, where fans were going to try to remake time splitters. There were rumors all over the place. We heard obviously that Embracer Group had purchased the rights to, to time splitters. There's a lot of excitement there, but now it's finally been officially announced. We can head over here. This was on Twitter, posted up by official Deep Silver saying a new Deep Silver studio is coming. Free Radical Design. Free Radical Design was the original studio around Time Splitters, and they had kind of a, a turbulent history after Time Splitters kind of went away. I Crytek, I think, bought them and then that disappeared and Crytek was having its own financial issues. And eventually they sold the rights for Time Splitters to Embracer Group that Deep Silver's part of. And 
Here we are now where they say Free Radical Design, a new Deep Silver studio. You asked and we listened. We have been working on plans to bring the Time Splitters franchise back to life and are pleased to let you know that we are setting up a new Deep Silver development studio to do just that. Free Radical Design is reforming and will be headed up by industry and Time Splitters veterans Steve Ellis and David Doak. This is an exciting first step in the process. Development on a new game has not yet started and we will update you when we have more news to share. This from Steve Ellis where he says, to finally be able to confirm that the studio has been formed and that we have a plan for the next Time Splitters game is incredible. While we cannot tell you anything more at the moment, we look forward to sharing information in the future. All right, so I'm excited to know that there is a new Time Splitters now to look forward to. But I'm also a little concerned that they announced this way too early. They haven't even started development yet. I mean, who knows what could happen? We could, they could run into issues around development. The last thing they can do now is cancel Time Splitters or get to the point where they can't release it or it goes away for a long time. The only reason I'm saying that is because we saw what happened with Metroid Prime 4. So I, it's nice to know that this is a thing and that this is happening, that they have been paying attention and people want Time Splitters, but maybe the better course of action would have been to get an older Time Splitters game, remaster it in some way, and then bring it up to consoles and then start working on this new Time Splitters game quietly to the point where they were ready to at least talk about it with some sort of working demo or some sort of cinematic, something that's like, okay, the groundwork is laid, we're ready to go here, let's show off this new Time Splitters game. But still, it's great to see them reform uh, the studio and all of this around Time Splitters, they seem very serious about this. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a while. Obviously, they haven't started development. Time Splitters will be an interesting one to see exist in 2024, I guess. I mean, if we're in 2021 now and it's like a three year dev cycle on this thing, yeah, it's going to be a bit. And I'll be curious to see what ideas they have around Time Splitters because that, after like Goldeneye and Perfect Dark, we go into like the, the PS2 era. That was like the couch multiplayer shooting game that we would play all the time. It was super fast and chaotic and a ton of fun. And Future Perfect came out in 2005. And yeah, it was technically the last uh, the last year of that generation before we all started looking at the new shiny Xbox 360, but it's still a good game that you can have a great time with. So I'm hoping they have other plans around Time Splitters with an HD remaster or something. You know what? That's actually what our poll is gonna kind of lean into. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft, Bethesda, E3, and Starfield. Let's head over here to IGN. Uh, this was a quote from an article that had Matt Booty talking about their plans going into E3, where they say Microsoft and Bethesda will host a joint conference this summer to introduce players to their upcoming projects. And this is apparently a conference coming that will be coming in a few weeks, which we all assume is going to be E3 2021. That's starting June 12th. Microsoft, I'm sure, is going to try to be like first one up as they usually are. And this is something that had been talked about. I believe it was mentioned at one point, uh, Jeff Grubb had talked about it on Twitter and others, that they would almost like put them end to end. So we'd go from Microsoft to Bethesda. Maybe they just kind of intertwine them. Maybe we have like uh, some Xbox first party stuff. We jump over to a Bethesda game, back to Xbox first party and, and so on there. So now we get to think about Starfield because it's pretty obvious that's probably going to be one of the big reveals at E3. We haven't seen anything about Starfield officially outside of like the title card and that animation, but we have seen a lot of leaks for different screenshots around it. However, it turns out anyone who was expecting it for 2021 is probably gonna be waiting a bit longer. This over on Twitter from Jason Schreier saying, let me make this very clear. Bethesda's plan is to tease a release date for Starfield E3. That date is in late 2022. I'll leave the specifics to them, but please keep your expectations in check and refrain from sending death threats when the other rumors turn out to be false. I mean, it's, yeah, don't do that. These are video games. Don't, don't be sending death threats to people around video games. But I mean, if you really think about it, it's Bethesda and I, I kind of like to not have another Fallout 76 situation. So if the game's not ready, don't push it out the door because they don't need another Fallout 76 situation. And what's interesting about Microsoft right now, if you think about it, Deathloop needed more time. So they gave it to them twice. Like they, I mean, they, they delayed it, they delayed it again. And Microsoft was probably thinking like, we just want to get Deathloop out the door so we can get uh, Arcane working on 
like a game for us, for the Xbox brand, for Game Pass, but here they are now spending, you know, more like months and months extra on Deathloop for PlayStation. So it's, Microsoft's certainly not like one to push something out the door right now, especially after what we saw with Halo Infinite. So I'm more excited right now to see what Starfield exactly is because we don't even know what Starfield really is still, so that'll at least be a cool big reveal. Late 2022 going into like holiday, it makes sense. They'll probably put a bunch of marketing around it. And with this holiday coming up for Microsoft, they're gonna have most likely Forza Horizon 5, and then obviously, Halo Infinite. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a random RPG from Bandai Namco that was announced for the Switch. It's kind of out of nowhere. Just, up oh, here it is on Twitter. We can see the trailer for it here. That's right, it's Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom Prince's Edition. It's coming to the Nintendo Switch September 17th, and the Prince's Edition contains the base game and both downloadable content packs, which includes Lair of the Lost Lord and Tale of a Timeless Tome. And I'm I'm looking at this, not really surprised that it is coming to the Switch, that being Nino Kuni 2, just that it took so long. I mean, it came out three years ago and really this just shows you that Bandai Namco has no problem bringing a game that's years and years old to the Switch just when they can. Like, it, it's not really in a rush, I guess. And that continues to lean into things like a Dragon Ball Z Kakarot eventually coming to the Switch. I would like to see Bandai get more on the ball with their releases being more timely for the Switch day and date, but I guess it's better than nothing. And I mean, the Switch has a lot of RPGs coming up over the next seven or eight months. This just kind of stacks on top of that. And like I said, it makes sense for this game to make the jump over. At least it'll have like all the DLC and stuff. Although the game has gone on sale quite a few times since it came out. In fact, I, I feel like it's pretty cheap now on other platforms, but still it makes sense why Bandai would want to get a game like Nino Kuni 2 over the Switch and we'll see what else they have planned for the series as we go along and maybe, you know, for the next one, they can have a, a day and date release on the Switch. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, have you played a Time Splitters game before? 7% of you said yes, and I still play them from time to time. 23% of you said yes, I've played at least one. 70% of you said, no, I never tried them. And I thought about this. I said, wow, 70% of people never tried time. I mean, it came out a while ago. I, it's 2005 was Future Perfect. And that was on the PS2 or the GameCube or the Xbox set. I always think of those systems as still kind of, I mean, not current, but not old, not retro. And they're old and retro. <laughs> That's just, some of us are just getting older, you know, and you, you don't really think about it too much, but I mean, we're getting to a point where the PS3 is like a retro system. The Xbox 360 is a retro system. You think about that and you're like, wow. Yeah, some people right now, their first system is like the Xbox One or the PS4, or soon to be PS5 and the Series X. And this leans into the idea of, we should have some sort of Time Splitters remaster. Go grab Time Splitters 2, get it set up for current platforms. Even if you're just kind of smoothing it out, making sure it works, you know, high frame rate and all of that. Maybe some online play too, add that on, that'd be cool. Hey, maybe you grab Future Perfect to bring that up. But I think the idea of getting some current gamers introduced to the series through way of a cheaper remaster would probably set up the newer, most likely more expensive game years down the line uh, for better success, but just an idea. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Super Koku saying, whoa, 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 Magical Drop is an excellent puzzle game. It's a great port of the Neo Geo original that's fast and tense and made for smack talking with your friends. Hardly what I call bottom of the barrel. They already gave us that with Doomsday Warrior. I meant more or less bottom of the barrel for exciting games. Ones you can show to someone and they actually get excited to go on the app and, and download it. The vast majority of people I say, like if you had a bunch of terrible games, but then you had Earthbound or you had Super Mario RPG or you had Chrono Trigger thrown in there, people wouldn't really care. There's a bunch of bad games. They would mostly focus on that one awesome game. And it just comes down to games being underrated, maybe not selling that well. And uh, you know, just not a lot of exposure for it, which obviously brings me back to Titanfall 2. Have you played Titanfall 2 today? You probably should. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. There was the sales numbers around the PS5 doubling up the Xbox series, but then the Switch doubling the PS5. Let me know about 
those numbers there. Also, what about Time Splitters? Now officially making its return. Are you someone who's new to the series? Maybe you're not just now checking it out after this news, or maybe you're someone who picked it up back in the day on the PS2 and you're as blown away as I was back then. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.